Good evening, friends. I am outside at nighttime tonight. One of my storybooks is talking about Curious George and the Stars. So I looked on my phone to see... Oh! <gasps> do you see that bright yellow planet up in the sky? That is actually Venus. And if you point up a little bit in the center of the screen, that circle is the moon. That is a planet, the moon. The yellow one is the planet Venus. And the circle right up above, if I can point my finger towards my phone, that one right there is the moon. And that is all the stars in the sky. This is really cool to come outside at nighttime and explore your backyard. Why don't you follow me into the pool area and I'm gonna read a story by the pool. Boys and girls, it's Miss Chris. I am outside in the dark and I'm gonna tell a story outside. I want you to take a moment and just listen for all the sounds to see if you can hear any nighttime sounds. You hear any crickets? Maybe some are frogs? Maybe during the story, you'll hear an owl or maybe some other kind of bird that is here. I just thought it was cool because this story is about Curious George discovers the stars. So I thought, why not read a story under the stars? It kind of feels like I'm camping, but I'm really just outside my house. This story is called Curious George Discovers the Stars. And sometimes you will see when you connect the dots to stars, they kind of look like pictures. That one right there is called the Big Dipper. Kind of looks like a cup or an upside down hat. So we're going to learn, just like Curious George is, about the stars here. Have you ever wondered how many stars there are in the sky? George has, especially when he's in the country. In the country, the summer nights are cool, you can hear the frogs croaking, and the sky is full of stars. One night, George was outside looking at the sky when he heard Bill's voice. Hi, George. It's a nice night for stargazing, Bill called from his window. But George just wasn't looking at the stars. He was trying to figure out how many stars there were in the sky. There must be hundreds. Not even scientists know how many stars there are, Bill said. George thought it was time somebody found out. George knew the most important thing the important rule of counting everything was to keep track. He found a notepad and a pencil and he made a mark for each star that he counted. There were so many stars to keep track of, but he kept at it. One, two, three, four, five. Did you know that scientists who study stars are called astronomers? People have looked at the stars and wondered about the mysteries of space for thousands of years. Early astronomers used the stars in the sky to find their way to make calendars. We still use some of their methods today. George wasn't fast enough. Looks like he fell asleep. Bill stopped by the following day. Morning, fellas! And the man waved, but George was still sleepy. George was up late counting the stars, the man said. Turn the page. Too bad you can't count the stars during the day. They are always up there, you know, Bill said. We just can't see them because the sun is so bright. Mm, George wasn't so sure. He wondered what really happened to the stars during the day. Maybe they went to sleep or got blown out like candles on a birthday cake. Whenever they went, wherever they went, George couldn't count stars he couldn't see. But did you know that Bill was right? The sun, the moon, and the stars are always in the sky. But we can only see them at certain times. Our eyes can't see the small lights of the stars during the day, 
because of the big light of the sun. I'm going to turn the page, see what else George is going to find out. There are lots of differences between the sky during the day and the sky at night, the man said. We can see the moon and the stars at night, but we can see the sun only during the day. Right, said Bill, because at night the sun is shining on the other side of the earth. When it's nighttime here, it's daytime there. When it came to day sky at night sky, George was sure about two things. He couldn't count the stars during the day and he couldn't count all the stars in one night, but he wasn't going to give up. Did you know that the sun and the moon are very different? The sun is a star that gives off heat and energy that the plants and animals need to live on Earth. Earth spins and orbits, that means it circles around it circles around the sun, and the moon is mostly made of rock. It can't make light. It reflects the light from the sun and orbits the earth. Hmm. Wonder if George is still counting. George took a good look at the night sky. There were stars scattered around like confetti, and like the confetti, there wasn't a pattern to be there wasn't a pattern to the way they were arranged, unless George noticed a group of stars that looked familiar. They looked like an upside down cap, just like his red cap there, but kind of upside down. George could see and use this star shape as a placekeeper. He counted the stars below it and marked them on his pad, and then he counted the stars above it and on each side. But did you know that the star shape George saw is called the Big Dipper. Long ago, people began naming shapes they saw in the stars and they called these shapes constellations. Constellations. There are 88 constellations in all. Astronomers named these star shapes and used them to map the sky just like George did. George had a system. He could use the stars to keep track of which stars he had already counted, and when he got tired, he could go to bed and know where he left off for the next night's count. At the end of the week, it was time for George and the man to return to the city. George had made a lot of progress in his star counting, and now that he had a system, he could count all the stars in the city, too. Big hot city, here we come, the man said. But did you know that the night sky looks different depending on where you are on the earth? You can see different constellations from North America than you can see from Australia. And on the other side of the planet, lucky for George, the big city is close enough to the country house that the sky is the same in both places. So he didn't have to travel to Australia. He just went to a different city. And that's close enough so the stars might look the same. But there was no air conditioning in the lobby. George wondered why. The man at the desk said, Too many air conditioners running at once uses a lot of electricity. It can cause the power to go out. So we're not allowed to use them. But George wasn't worried about electricity and being too hot. He had stars to count. George knew he would have a great view of the sky from the roof. But when he got up there and looked around, he saw something strange. In the city, he couldn't see any stars at all. Oh, I bet that made him very sad that evening. He was looking forward to going to the big city and he couldn't see any. George went back to the apartment to see his friend. It's tough to count the stars in the big, bright city, the man explained. George was confused. It's like trying to count stars during the daytime. They're up there, uh, but we can't see them. Oh, with no stars to count, George figured he might as well go to bed. But it was too hot to sleep. The one time he could have stayed awake all night long to count, 
He couldn't see a single star. Did you know Did you know my flashlight just went out? I got another one so we can still read the story. Sorry about that. It's really still nighttime out here. Let's see. I was saying, did you know that George can't see the stars because there's too much man-made light in the city? Lots of street lights and city lights and building lights. Just like the sun outshining the stars during the day, the street lights from the city and the buildings, and they're just bright enough to block out the natural light of the stars at night because the stars are still there. George took a walk out onto the balcony. His neighbors had their air conditioners on. George could hear them humming. Would it really hurt if he turned their AC on? Just for a minute. Oh, I think he did it. The cold air felt really good on George's face, but a moment later, the AC and all the lights in the apartment went out. Uh-oh, the whole city, kind of like my flashlight. Everything kind of got dark, but don't worry. Mommies and daddies are with the kids. It's going to be okay. George ran back up to the roof. Whoa-oh, the lights were out in the cities all around them. But one curious little monkey, could he cause the citywide blackout? George didn't know, but there was only one thing to do like this at a time like this. He's going to hide. But before long, the man found George in his hiding spot. George was upset about turning off the city's electricity. It wasn't your fault, George, the man said. It takes a lot more than one little monkey to cause a blackout. Did you know that blackout is another word for power outage? A blackout can happen for many reasons, such as wind causing the, the trees to fall on power lines or people using lots of extra electricity at the same time and that causes the system to shut down. Important buildings like hospitals, they have backup generators, so they do not lose power during blackouts. Castle Rock has had a blackout before. I thought it was fun. We used it to go camping and make some moors. Well, George, there's one good thing about this blackout. Now you can see all the stars. And it was true now that all the electric, electrical lights were out and the city was dark, he could see the sky full of stars again. George found the big upside down cap and he settled in for a long, good star count. Boys and girls, I want you to listen for just a second again. I hear the night sounds. I hope tonight you can go outside and look at the stars yourself. Have a great night, everybody.